Welcome to the Friday vlog. Welcome to the Friday vlog. So I'm going to be using Angus as a guinea pig today. Mm, sounds ominous. <laughs> so we finished our podcast with the couple we were working with, Alicia and Matteo. And we're going to be doing some additional episodes with guest speakers. And I like the idea of having uh, a set of questions that we ask the guest speakers. Each guest speaker is going to ask at the end of um, our conversation with them to just have them answer a set of questions. And so I wanted to test out the questions. And so I thought, who better person to test out the questions with than you? Right. <laughs> They're not terrible questions. Okay. These are going to be questions that we okay. use with other people. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe they're terrible questions for me. I don't know. <laughs> they're not um, memory. Well, they are. <clears throat> they're not like you have to remember specific content. Okay. They're just whatever comes to mind. So that's the other thing. It's not that you have to think about this a lot. It's just like whatever comes to mind in the moment. I just want to hear what you have to Start say. Start to treat it like improv. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the first one is, what's your fondest memory, or one of the fondest memories you can think of in our relationship? Um, fondest memory, I think, um, I think that when we got married, oh. um, and we were standing on that cliff, which was essentially your mum's front garden in Canada, and halfway through the ceremony, uh, a pod of orca whales came up, literally 20, 20 odd yards offshore. Uh, and it was almost like it's, uh, it's it was like a it was like a blessing of the marriage. It was a very portentous moment, uh, and I thought that was really powerful. So that's that occurs to me to say in this moment. That that's was, beautiful. And didn't that happen when we were waiting for the photographer who got last to show up? No, I think it happened during the ceremony. It did. Yeah. Oh my goodness, our memories. I can't remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was extraordinary. Yeah. Did we all stop and go look at the whales? Well, yes, we did. I don't remember that. I did. We did, yeah. We stopped the ceremony and went and looked at the whales? Well, no, I, when I say halfway through the ceremony, I think the important parts of the <laughs> ceremony had concluded. Um, but it, it felt like, or pretty soon after, I felt like we were definitely, towards the end of the ceremony, the orcas appeared. Yeah. Uh, and then everybody, and a lot of people had flown in, so it was obviously quite spectacular to see orcas that close to shore and I you know I guess I'd been to your mum's property on numerous other occasions you could see them way out in the distance miles offshore yeah this was literally 20 yards offshore yeah. so that was that was extraordinary it was me. it was very entertaining and for those of you who don't know um our wedding photographer did the photographer ever show up? They were like two hours late or something crazy <laughs> or crazy late because <laughs> they got lost trying to find the place yeah <laughs> anyway at least the officiant was able to find it. That's true. All well, right. that's one down. One down. So what's one of the funniest memories that you recall in our relationship? Funniest memories? Yeah. I don't know. My goodness, there have been so many. Um, Just one. All right. Well, one that comes to mind immediately <laughs> was, was when, the, when we first met. And I, uh, I guess to, to mock you from time to time... <laughs> because I felt that was my duty, being an Englishman and you being Canadian, was uh, in terms of trying to give you some sort of direction about how to use the English language in its, in its purest and correct form. So um, I noticed that you would uh, substitute the letter D, sorry, the letter T with a letter D. So an example would be, you wouldn't say water, say you'd say water. And so you would, often ask for a glass of water or, 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 or you know wa water would come up in conversation quite frequently and I would say and I would go to great lengths to say it's not water it's water 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 look at my lips water and so you told me how you got into a bit of a panic on one of your first modeling shoots um, and uh, the makeup artist came to you halfway through the day as you were sitting in the makeup room um, and said, do you want anything? And you went to say, I would like, you wanted to say, I would like a glass of water. But apparently from what you said, you freaked out in the moment and you stuttered and you said, can I have a glass of water? I can say it. <laughs> to which the makeup artist being English then spent the rest of the day, every time he saw you go, Whoa. 
<laughs> Wasn't he a friend of yours too? I think I knew him. Chris. I, yes, and, and then uh, <laughs> and then you were mad at me at the end of the day <laughs> for creating that sense of panic in your life. Anyway, I've, I've just gone back to water. Yes, you've gone back to water. <laughs> All right. So what's one of the most difficult times that you can remember in our relationship and what helped you get through it? Um, well, one of the most difficult times would actually be um, when you decided to uh, investigate pastures new, shall we say, <laughs> and, um, and we're seeing someone else uh, and I found that really, really difficult. Um, um, and I guess, to be honest, probably um, one of the ways that I chose to get over that was probably to go and investigate Pastor's New to myself. <laughs> that made it more bearable. It kind of took my mind off the pain. Um, I don't know that it helped, but it certainly uh, allowed me to sort of um, um, distract myself. It was, you know, ease the pain on that level. Okay, thank you. And then... How, uh, this is a sensitive subject in our household, how are the domestic chores divided in our relationship? Painfully. <laughs> That's right. Um, I think that the domestic chores probably um, are a lot to do with when I get upset about the domestic chores. It's probably a lot to do with my state of mind. And then when I'm in a settled state of mind, I can be more philosophical about how they naturally uh, kind of get taken on based on who's doing what. So I think that that for me is perhaps how I managed to surf that difficult line between getting upset or not. I think it, I become, I've become much more cognizant of my state of mind. If I'm in a low mood per se, uh, the domestic chores become a very familiar pattern for me to jump on a negative train of thought. But if I'm in a good mood, a good frame of mind, I can be more philosophical about it. Or I can perhaps um, approach it in a neutral way. I feel, I feel like there's an imbalance. I can talk about it in a neutral way. Whereas if I'm upset, based on my state of mind, I will not be neutral. Got it. How are the finances handled in your relationship? Well, you seem to be much better at hand handling the finances than me, which has been a very contentious issue over the years because I think that there has been, a, and rightfully so probably, there's been an, a tendency from you to get impatient around how I uh, tend to operate on a financial level. <laughs> um, but I think that that nevertheless is also perhaps, 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 fallen into a sort of natural order um, whereby which is what <laughs> which is like I just recognize that you are the more skilled individual in terms of tracking finances than I am I'm not nearly as meticulous I'm just not not good with detail and you're very detail oriented uh, so I tend to make mistakes because of my my inability around detail that doesn't mean to say I don't like, lack skills in other areas. I, you know, I, I, I hopefully balance the scales by being more skilled in other areas. This is just very much a skill set for you, so I'm quite happy for you to handle that. Okay, great. I'm glad you're happy with that. Yes. <laughs> and then, what's one of the biggest misunderstandings that our relationship has helped you wake up from? The biggest misunderstanding is that, um, and, and, I, and I know this applies you know, it goes both ways. Um, but for me, is that um, is when you are um, upset or out of balance, which is quite infrequent these days, I don't take that personally. I don't have to try and fix or manage your mood. Um, I have to just realize that that's just something that you're going through. I don't need to take that personally and it's not incumbent upon me to, uh, to try and change that for you. So in a sense, it's gone from being a codependent relationship to one where I just realized this is just probably a, psycho a psychological weather pattern that you're dealing with. You will come back to your set settled natural state of well-being. Um, and I don't have to do anything really than just wait for that. And if I do try and do something and interfere with that natural process, uh, I'm likely to get my fingers burned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. 
Uh, it's helped me a lot too. Not yeah. just you getting that misunderstanding, right. but me waking up from it too. So what's one of the one of um, the things that I one of uh, I don't even know what the question is. <laughs> what's one of the favorite things that I do for you? One of the favorite things that you do for me. Um, well, I guess is that you just love me. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> that is my favorite thing. Aww. Yeah, you really love me, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. Yeah. What's the least favorite thing that I do? Um, the least favorite thing you do, which is probably a lot, a lot to do with my state of mind, is uh, you can be quite critical, mm. particularly around finances. <laughs> Not lately, no, though, not but anyway, lately. But no, that yeah. was that was definitely something that was problematic in the past. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I would have a, a, a strong dislike of what I at one point or in my low mood would would uh, label a critical nature, which obviously is not not the case. But that's that's to do with my state of mind. So okay. I, I'm very sensitive to criticism. I think most people are. Maybe I'm hypersensitive to it. I don't know. But in the context of a relationship, my sensitivity to criticism becomes hyper, I think, because mm -hmm. I don't want that in my intimate world mm -hmm. or my home life or in my intimate relationship. I can, I can absolutely understand that. Yes. Um, what is one thing that would be a relationship deal breaker and why? A relationship deal breaker? Deal breaker? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe if you decided you suddenly um, became a serial killer or something. I don't know. Even then, I don't know. I'd like to see. I'd see, you know, <laughs> see the psychological innocence and say, see that you're just a victim of your programming and conditioning. Well, I don't know what programming and conditioning would turn you into a serial killer. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I'd like to think that. Uh, and then saying that, I hope that I'm not put to a test. <laughs> I'm gonna put you to any tests. I'd like to think that I would find a way to see the psychological innocence and see that you know we're all spiritual beings having a human experience and your human experience has just put you in this situation and I don't have to really take it that personally okay I don't know I'm not going to test you okay, don't worry good. Okay. <laughs> um, how do you keep physical intimacy alive in our relationship um porn <laughs> <laughs> Really? No, no, not at all. No, not at all. That would be probably the last thing I would I would turn to. Um, I don't know. I just, I guess, I just, I guess, I have a desire in that department. I don't know to what spectrum of physical intimacy we're talking about well, here. Kissing, hugging. I mean, there's a full spectrum. Just well, yeah. How no. do you keep it alive? Well, I know. I like to kiss you and hug you, amongst various other things. <laughs> So it just seems like it comes very naturally to me. I think there's hopefully there's a mutual attraction there that keeps it alive. Um, I don't know. Okay. If you weren't married to me, and this is completely free range here, who would you like to be married to? Anyone in the world? Anyone in the world? Yes. What, like a celebrity or something? Could be anyone. I don't know. I don't know that I want to be married to anybody <laughs> else. <laughs> I think the, uh, the important thing about marriage and the beautiful thing about marriage and certainly for the amount of time that we've been married is that we really know each other. So in that sense, it's like, yeah, I don't want to really start from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm perfectly happy the way that I am. Okay. And what would you like to, this is the final question, what would you like to acknowledge yourself for in terms of your growth in our relationship? Um... Well, I think that perhaps now is just to realize that relationship is just another facet of this game of life where I get to grow and learn. It's not all a bed of roses. And in actual fact, when it's not a bed of roses, those are the growing opportunities. That's when I get to step up to the plate uh, and hopefully move to the next level of, co of understanding and awareness. So I think that it's now, it's my willingness to grow. I've seen it as a growing opportunity not that you have to tick all these boxes these are the my standards and expectations of what marriage is supposed to look like marriage is very much a step into the unknown and that's kind of what's fantastic about it and it's not that that unknown is always comfortable but it's always growth and learning 
and I feel like I have been willing to grow and learn with you, even when it's been uncomfortable. Mm. Take the rough with the smooth. <laughs> Thank you for answering my questions. You're, you're that's, welcome. That's that was quite fun, actually. It, it wasn't was as scary fun. as I thought it might be. Yeah, so we will debrief. Were there any that you think I should get rid of? No, I, was, I think it was good. Oh, you did? Yeah, All right. quite enjoyed that. Well, you hope you enjoy it too. And have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.